Welcome to video 5 of VEX Robotics programming tutorial. Today we will be covering the cutting functions in C. My name is Jeffrey Han and let's get started. You already know what a function is from the previous video, but now we will be making our own. A lot of the time in coding, you'll see yourself copying and pasting a lot of your code, especially during autonomous where you'll have to move the chassis forward. To do this, you'll typically need four lines of code, one for each motor, to spin the motor. To stop, you'll have to write another four lines. This makes the code messy and long and can get in the way when you're trying to figure out what portions of the code does what. The crank functions is a way to solve that. Here we see a sample move forward function that turns four motors named top left, bottom left, top right, and bottom right at a speed speed. To declare a function, write a variable type and the name of the function and then any parameters you need before the main class. I will explain parameters now, but keep, in, keep the variable type in mind for later. Also, instead of a variable type, you are also able to write void. We will explain that later. The variables you put in, in the parentheses after the name of the function are called parameters or arguments, and you separate them through commas. Functions don't necessarily need parameters, but if you want to give them a value from the main, normally you'll have to use them. If you see in the previous slide, you'll see that we use the parameter speed to turn on the motors at that speed. Now when you call the function domain, you can simply pass a value for speed and it'll rotate at that speed. In the previous slide here, we see that we use int speed and then we use speed for the speed of the motors. Here we see a sample function called tester that has multiple parameters. It has the integer start, the double stop, and the boolean check. When you call a function, you need to write the name of the function and then put in any values for whatever parameters the function needs. The main scene here will call the move forward function we wrote earlier and turn all four motors at a speed of 100. If you change the 100 to 50, it will turn the four motors at a speed of 50, 24, 20, so on and so forth. Keep in mind that you need to pass parameters in the same order that you asked for them. Tester, for example, from the previous slide, will require you to pass an integer, a double, and a boolean in that order. If you don't pass the correct parameters, it could return an error. Functions up to now had void written before their names. That won't always be the case and can be replaced with any variable type like integers or strings. However, if you write int for example, you will have to return an integer at the end of the function. This code for example returns the average of the two numbers a and b when it's past a and b. Notice the words return. This is important. When you have a variable type in the function declaration, it must return a variable of the same type. Though sometimes they'll check and say that it's okay to return a very, uh, double for an integer, you don't want to be returning a string for an integer since the strings are a race. When you code return in your function, um, you can consider it to be replacing the return value. In other words, here in the main we see int result is equal to zero. Result is equal to average 10, 20. You might think that average returns 15, so what does it do with it? You could consider 15 to replace average parentheses 10, 20. So now at the end of this code, the variable re result will have a value of 15. Keep in mind that return puts an end to the function. In other words, it won't move on to the rest of the lines of code. In the function checker here, if you pass in a boolean that is true, then it won't do anything since it will return and it won't be able to move on to the move forward command. However, if check is false, then it will not return and move on to the move forward function. If the checker function was not void, you would have to put a return at the end, say return one, but since it is void, you don't necessarily need to return. As a side note, you can call functions in other functions. You could even call a function within itself. In addition, void functions can return, however, they will not return anything. Recursion is a topic that you'll eventually run into and will be important in later programming, but you will probably not need it in robotics. For the sake of showing it off, however, here is the simple Fibonacci code. The way it works is it, it calls its own function and eventually returns the nth digit in the Fibonacci sequence. 
Um, you could try and wrap your head around it, but it might be difficult. Don't worry if you don't understand it. Um, eventually, you'll have to learn it though. That's all for video 5. Uh, now you can call functions efficiently and make functions of your own as well. It makes your code easier to read and makes your code easier to document as well. Functions are, important in, uh, are an important part of programming that is crucial not only in robotics, but in every branch of programming. Eventually, you'll create a library, which is a collection of functions for your own use, um, but that will be for later. Thank you for watching, and have a good day. Goodbye.